Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to an episode of Locked On Buckeyes for the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by the Locked On Big Ten Podcast because there's simply no better place to get all the news on the Big Ten Conference than with the Locked On Big Ten Podcast and its new host, Mr. Nate Dickinson. Follow the Locked On Big Ten Podcast on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your fine podcast. It is Wednesday, August 11th in the year 2021. And no matter if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast or if you're watching us on YouTube or WKYC.com, all three ways are free and i want to thank you for making locked on buckeyes a part of your day as always you can follow me on twitter at j steven 07 you can also follow the podcast on twitter as well at locked on buckeye lineup for today we will highlight and discuss the depth person versatility it's a possible changes we'll see on the offensive line this year we'll also highlight and discuss some things that are changes to the game day experience for Ohio State home games in the fall. But we open the show talking about some news and notes from fall camp. Some might surprise you and some might put a smile on your face. It's fall camp. The second week of fall camp, there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things to touch on. And you may hear some things to say, ooh, I like that. Ooh, that surprises me. Ooh, I am startled by what Jay is saying. Let's start with the quarterback position. Last week, we highlighted and talked about briefly the order and the drills that the quarterbacks are going. It was C.J. Stroud, Kyle McCord, Jack, Jack Miller III. Well, just this week, it's a slight change, slight alteration to the two and three slot in this order in the line. C.J. Stroud continues to be the number one person in these drills. But then recently, it was C.J. Stroud, followed by Jack Miller III, and then Kyle McCord and two walk-ons behind him. Should you read into the two and three slot? Not really. The only thing I will really take away from this is that CJ Stroud continues to be the leader in the room, the leader, excuse me, the leader in these drills. Myself, other people have stated that they we believe that Stroud will be QB1. It sure seems like if since he's the leader in these drills right now, that he'll be QB1. Game one, September 2nd, against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. The running back order goes like this. It is still Mayan Meatball Williams, as some people call him. Number one, Master Teague. Two, Marcus Crawley, Trevion Henderson, kind of that three spot. Then Evan Pryor right behind him, the true freshman running back. Remember there was a sixth running back all summer long, Steel Chambers, and then we talked about how he was at a team out, excuse me, a position group outing with the LBs, the linebackers, not with the running backs. Well, Steel Chambers is a full-time linebacker right now, and Ryan Day stated this was his decision. Ultimately, he gave Steel Chambers the opportunity and the chance to make a decision about his future, about where he will play the football at the Ohio State University, and ultimately... Still, Chambers has decided to go to the opposite side of the field and to be a linebacker. The next little area I want to hit is a couple things. It's one about Seven Banks. Ryan Day recently stated that Seven Banks kind of tweaked something. Mentioned it a couple days ago. Seven, Seven Banks missed a couple days of practice, a couple, excuse me, a couple practices. He was back at the practice field on Tuesday. However, there was a portion that he went away from where the team was to go to an opposite area to, to not really to be, to not really be in the team portion of the practice, probably still nursing and, and recovering from slightly tweaking something. But he is still, but he is back at practice after missing a couple practices. Offensive lineman Ryan Jacoby spent, spent, a, spent about a two, spent about two years at Ohio State. 
He has decided to enter the transfer portal. We'll talk about some things in the very next segment, which could lead to or be why he has decided to put his name in the transfer portal right now. Earlier in the summer, I believe it was in July, was the deadline for you to get immediate eligibility with a one-time transfer. Yes, they do allow waivers. We're still waiting on Palai. I think I also think I may have been pronouncing his name wrong. Uh, Palai is what I've also heard a different pronunciation pronunciation of his first name. Naoti Oti. I have not heard any differentiation with that of how to pronounce his name. But Palai Naoti Oti, the linebacker transfer from USC out there in Southern California, still waiting on a waiver for him because he decided to transfer after the the deadline was up or hit for you to get immediate eligibility right now. Gee Scott Jr. is with the tight ends as well as with the linebackers. There are numerous scouts at Ohio State's practice on Tuesday from numerous teams around the National Football League. Running back, true freshman running back Travion Henderson has been returning kickoffs. Were you expecting that? Were you expecting to hear Jay say that Travion Henderson, true freshman running back, was back there re- returning kickoffs? I wasn't. When I when I heard this news and I saw this this news, I said, "Whoa, he's not just returning them. He's the lead. Ki- it's possible, possible. He will be the lead kickoff returner." A couple more things to note very very quickly. Ronnie Hickman was back at practice on on the practice field Tuesday after leaving with an injury during the previous practice that was open to the media on Friday. Linebacker Cody Simon was in full pads, but ran off toward the area on the, on the adjacent field where injured players spent practice and did not return while the media was watching practice. A lot there, a lot to go over. Notice there are some things with the offensive line we're going to hit on, but we got to wait till the very next segment for that. There's a lot of news coming up about this offensive line room, this offensive line depth. And when you hear what I'm discussing, what we have to say about what's going on with the O-line, that is something that you might like. A lot's going on at fall camp. Awaiting the arrival of Quinn Ewers. Waiting to see who the next person will be that loses their black stripe. Awaiting to get an answer from Ryan Day to solidify and to announce who QB1 is also, I think, around the time that he announces that, which will be coming up soon, probably possibly at the end of the week, early next week, you'll probably get an answer about who the starting center is, a solidification about those two positions, because you know starting center continuity with the old line is good, but continuity with the quarterback is good as well. Let's step away very quickly when we come back. We'll move on to the offensive line and highlight some possible alterations or changes to this group. You might like what is going on. But first, check this out. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Baseball season is in full swing, and you can track all the action at Bet Online. Get all the latest news, odds, and info for all your sporting needs, including MLB, NBA, NHL, and all your UFC slash MMA action. Before the next pitch, head over to betonline.ag on your laptop or mobile device and check out all the great sporting news, sign-up bonuses, and even contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore as this is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their runs to the playoffs. Head to betonline.ag on your laptop or mobile device to sign up today. And when you do, make sure you use that friendly promo code Locked On. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, and it's all one word. And receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, your online sports book experts. If this is your first time watching Locked on Buckeyes, I want to say welcome. Or if it's your first time watching or listening to the podcast, I want to say welcome back. Locked on Buckeyes drops a fresh new episode for you every Monday through Friday. So make sure you subscribe on the Odyssey app, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your fine podcasts, or, and the YouTube channel as well, Locked on Buckeyes, in the search engine on the YouTube to find the YouTube page for the show so you don't miss a beat. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, Locked on Buckeyes is a daily episode, that daily podcast for you, and it's also free, F-R-E-E, that spells free, creditreport.com, baby, we like free stuff, and this podcast is free. Subscribing is free. Consuming is free. It's a great all around for you and I to stay up to date with our Ohio State Buckeyes. 
the offensive line. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting to see what the starting five offensive linemen will be. I have been on the record for saying back in the spring, I thought it would be Matt Jones at left guard, Harry Miller at the center position, Thayer Mumford at left tackle, Paris Johnson Jr. at right guard, and then you would have Nicholas, Nicholas Petit Frayer at right tackle. And I got to go to my notes here very quickly on my phone so I do not butcher what I am about to say. There were rumors, and I heard this actually a day ago, a couple of days ago, actually, for the first time I heard um, the possible alteration, possible change of what Ryan Day, Coach Stud, and the offense, Kevin Wilson, will be trying this new variation, alteration to the offensive line. And in basketball, we'll lose, use a little basketball analogy, there has been a trend, a moving to this mindset. Put the best five guys on the court. There was a time. There was a time in basketball. Your top five guys, you would orchestrate and build your team to where your top five guys, of course, your top five guys have, have positions specific, but you would have one through five. Those would generally be the best five guys on the team, but it, it was that you would still have one through five, point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and center. Now some people are going to positionless basketball, but even, a, even in positionless basketball, your point guard is still your point guard. You may have an interchangeable two guard and three, your shooting guard and small forward. They might be able to interchange positions. You might have a stretch four, which is there, and still your center is going to be the guy that's doing a lot of, a lot of the bumping and um, moving and bruising of the players on the basketball court. But those are, I mean, you're still getting somewhat positionless basketball, but everybody still has a role and had to fit in where they get in. Well, Ohio State is now in an area where they can possibly put the best five offensive linemen on the field. And when I say the best five, I literally mean the best five. And before I say any names, I'm going to just have a little picture, paint a picture in your head. Think about the center position. Think about the guard position. Think about the offensive tackle, center, offensive guard, offensive tackle. Think about the body type for each. Think about how you view, say, your center at Ohio State. Body type, height, weight, build, slender, or is he wide? Your guard. Think about that type of build. Think about the offensive tackle. Long, tall, lengthy, can be can play on an island, better in island on an island than in a phone booth. Think about all of the things that go into the offensive line and the different positions. And now when I relay to you what is the possible, what the well the little tweaks that, that are that are going on right now. With the offensive line, you might say, whoo, 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 that's different. But, Jay, I like what's going on right now. Ohio State right now, they're in a position to experiment. It's fall camp. Experiments are going to happen. Will they, be, will they actually happen in the season? I'm not sure, but this is something that has been going on since way back in, the, in January and February. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about here in a second. Ohio State is trying out this offensive line. Left tackle, Nicholas Petit Frere. Left guard, Thayer Mumford. Center, Harry Miller. Right guard, Paris Johnson Jr. And right tackle, Dewan Jones. I have a tackle in Petit Frere, a tackle in Mumford, a tackle in Johnson, and a tackle in Jones. You're mean to telling me that Ohio State is so versatile and they're possibly going to be doing a little bit, a little more experimenting with the offensive line that they can move their starting right tackle from last year to the left side. They can move their starting left tackle into left guard. They can move their their left tackle in the future to right guard. You can move a backup to the starting right tackle position. Not the ideal spots that I think these guys are expected to play early on or right now, but this goes back to a conversation that Thayer Mumford had with Dewan Jones. People have been high on Dewan Jones for a very, very, very long time. 6'9", between 360 and 370, not my not my height and weight, but his, coming out of his mouth, that's a big boy. That's a massive human being. He, he's even got some quick feet, some a little bit of some moves on the basketball court as well, and that's a big boy. And back in the summer, there was a thought, there was a, there was a thing, a little pushing of Dewan Jones saying, hey, man, look, you're good. You're really good. You have some talent, but you got to pay attention to... The details. I remember in school, my teacher, didn't really matter which one, it was more than one, 
your boy was not the best student in the classroom. I'm going to be open and honest about that. I didn't put my all into the classroom. I literally wanted to get by, pass, move on to the next grade, go on to college, go on to college so on and so forth. Numerous teachers, numerous, came by and talked to me and said, Jay, if you just paid attention to detail, your grades would be a whole lot better. If you just paid attention and worked a little bit harder at the small little details and studied just a little bit harder and, you know, went a little bit extra with the homework and did a little bit extra reading on your own and didn't rely on everything you did in the classroom, you would be a whole lot better of a student than you are right now. The potential was always there, but the the motivation for me was not. And DeJuan Jones had a conversation with Thayer Mumford, and Thayer Mumford earlier in the season said, hey, man, look, you're good. Pay attention to the detail. I have no problem moving from left tackle to left guard if it's what's best for the team. So Thayer Mumford right now is playing a left guard position, moving inside from the outside, bet, making him a better prospect for the NFL. Nicholas, Nicholas, Nicholas petit Frere, if this goes what, like we think it will, moving from right side to left side, the position that he probably will play in the NFL left tackle makes him a better NFL prospect than if he played if he just played on the right side. Paris Johnson Jr., who many people believe will be the starting left tackle next season, makes him a better NFL prospect because he can play right tackle, right guard, left guard, left tackle, more versatile, and makes him a whole lot better. And Dewan Jones gets a chance to show and to prove that he deserves his spot at right tackle. Earlier than myself, and earlier than I think a lot of people expected him to be. Now, this is not set in stone. I'm not saying this is set in stone to where you could say, "Oh, Jay said, oh, Jay said, we're gonna we're gonna have this offensive offensive line putting the best five guys on the field." I am not saying that, but what I am saying is this: There's a trend in basketball. Put the best five guys on the on the court. Wide receiver position. Yes, I know the slot position is different than the X receiver or the Z receiver. There's a, there's variations to that. I, I get it. I understand it. But a lot of times you can put a guy at the slot that can play on the uh play on the outside on either side of the field and he'll be just fine. So you you're getting a little position unless you go to the four two five little hybrid, a guy that can play a little LB, a little safety, a little maneuvering, and you can be versatile that way. But versatility on the offensive line, think about how massive, think about that, how elusive, think about the draft prospects this is gonna be. They're month for the guy who's in many Mock drafts is on the outside of the first round looking in, but I think he can be a first round draft pick next season, even if he played left tackle. But if he plays left guard, baby, what are you waiting on? NFL executive, NFL coach, GM, what are you waiting for? He killed at left tackle last year. He's probably going to kill a left guard if this happens. And this might be what propels Ohio State. I don't know. I don't know. But if this if this happens, your boy would like. He likes what he sees, and he would like, myself, would like to see the best five and the best off the line, off of the line on the field. Want to know why? Partially because it makes, not partially, it helps Ohio State be more dominant, and it makes my job a lot easier. We're going to step away very quickly when we come back. We will talk about some changes to the game day experience at the Ohio State University. But first, check this out. Did you know that Bill Bar has nine delicious flavors plus the occasional limited time flavor as well when you talk to a built bar fan they're definitely passionate about their favorites some of their flavors go as follows coconut and coconut almond two flavors that i love cherry and raspberry mint brownie peanut butter brownie double chocolate and even salted caramel not only are built bar flavors the best tasting but they're healthy too 17 to 18 grams of protein, calories ranging from 130 to 180, only 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and only 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. Go to Built.com and use that friendly promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and it's all one word to receive your 15% off, to receive 15% off your next order. Once again, go to Built. Dot com and use that friendly promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 to receive 15% off at Built.com. And as we roll on and continue today's episode here of Locked on Buckeyes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every single day, Ohio Stadium, the shoe. Last year for the first time, and I don't remember how long, probably the first time ever, no fans. Not one. Well, there were some friends of family and 
friends of coaches. No, family of family of coaches, family of players. Maybe a friend or two got the way, got the way to get in the stadium. But that's it. Nothing. We're used to 100,000. We're used to 100,000 strong. We're used to the loud war of the crowd when the players run into the field. We're used to O-H-I-O going around the stadium, but didn't get that last year. Mm -mm. Due to the reaction to the COVID and the way that people that were in leadership reacted to the COVID, nothing. Nothing at all. Well, Ohio State has announced some changes, some alterations to the game day experience for Ohio State. There was a video that uh, Jerry Emig tweeted out on Tuesday afternoon, and it was just talking about you enter Ohio Stadium. Other details in an article as well, but you enter Ohio Stadium, well, everything will be mobile. Your ticket will be mobile. You can pay with credit card or for Apple Pay or Google Pay if you're trying to spend some money for parking. Um, there's a, a parking a parking area that will still be available, but they're moving away from the cash and going to the digital age and the digital wise to for payments for tickets. Very similar to what things were last year. If you went to a sporting event, I know some of you may have been able to go to a high school sporting event or two last year. All the sporting event I went to last year, high school wise, high school football, high school basketball, it was all digital ticket. I don't believe I spent. I, I bought one physical ticket last year, not one. Now I can spend. I can use cash when at the concession stand, and there was only one stadium I went to: North Central High School, the high school that Eric Gordon went to, that he played high school basketball. There was only one that I went to that I had to that the concession stand was not open. It was very odd, very weird to go to a football game and not be able to get no drink, nothing to eat, no nothing. But that's the way that the response was to the COVID last year. Well, Ohio State's going to, to the to the more digital age. And it was a little detail that a lot of you may be wondering, Jay, when it comes to the MASK, the mask that many people have had to wear, what are the mask guidelines for Ohio State football? Well, the Ohio State University has already stated that masks are required regardless of vaccination stance or standing when you're inside a building in the university. On the university campus, inside a building, you have to wear a mask. And in accordance with the Ohio State's regulations and guidelines, that mask need to be worn inside no matter what your vaccination status is, Ohio State will require masks to be worn inside or when you're in an indoor or covered area. You can't get away from it. This also includes the public public space, in, interior public spaces, the Huntington Club, elevators, first aid rooms, restrooms, and press box area as well. The pregame skull session, all of those places you will, will have to wear a mask. Masks will not be required for outdoor public sp spaces, including the seating bowl, gates, concourses, or concession stands. So basically the way that I take this, and I'm going to try to use it in very plain ways because Jay's a very plain, ordinary guy, likes things very, very simple and simplified for him. If you go to a game, masks are only required. You're not required for when you walk into the stadium, when you go to the concession stand, but for main people like you and I, when you go to the restroom, cover your face. When you leave the restroom, uncover your face. That simple. Now, some of you may be in the press box. You may be media members. Some of you might be in the Huntington Club. Some of you might be in the first aid room. Now, those are all places, basically, if there is a covering over your head. Cover your face as well. Simple. Your boy likes simple. Your boy likes simple things. So... If there's a covering over your head, you got to cover your face as well. That's it. Simple. Expect to go digital when you're at the Ohio State University, the horseshoe, the Ohio Stadium. Expect to go, expect to go digital. Don't be like me. When, I, when I'm a person, I, I'm still getting used to this cashless society. Not really a fan of it, but I know that it's possibly going that route. I like to take money out of my bank account when going places because I want to spend cash when I'm out of town. Don't like swiping the C-A-R-D all the time. So I went out of town recently, went to the basketball tournament a couple weeks ago, and I had money out of my – I had much cash. I, I, like, I want to get down. I want to spend cash. They're like, oh, no, you can only use a card. So I thought maybe, uh, no, let me go get some dipping Dots. No, you, only, you, you, can, you can only use a card. 
So I am getting used to this. I don't know how well I'll be able to adapt to this. Well, mentally, physically, yes, but mentally, I'm not sure how quickly and easily I'll be able to adapt to this cashless move that seems like they're going, seems like it's going on in the country, but it's going to be going that way. And Ohio may do it, other states may not, maybe case by case basis. So be prepared. Have cash on you if you like some cash. Have some, make sure you make sure you got money in your bank account. But when you go to Ohio Stadium, the cash doesn't really mean anything. They won't take it because they want to use that card, Apple Pay, or Google Pay for everything. One last time, I'm to get this out. When you're at Ohio Stadium, if there is a covering over your head, make sure you cover your face. That's all your boy has for today. This has been fun. Got a little animated. Didn't think I would get animated that way while talking about the covering over the head, covering over the face. But we're having fun talking Ohio State athletics as Always, you can follow me on Twitter at jsteven07. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter as well at Locked On Buckeye. Look out, we're looking to continue our Buckeye road trip around the NFL. Can't say just win just yet, but has some things in the works. Possibly tomorrow, could be next week, but we'll get some more season expectations for, for former Buckeyes and what we can expect for them in the upcoming NFL season. Have a great day, guys. And as always, go Bucks!